Welcome to the Tish WNET studio here in uh, New York City in Lincoln Center. It is our honor to welcome uh, Mr. John Gallagher, Jr., Tony Award winning actor in the Roundabout Theater production of Eugene O'Neill's Long Day's Journey into Night. Um, I know you're from that HBO series called Newsroom. Wow, oh, you're yeah. great in that. Thank you. How, how often do people just stop you? By the way, you did not have that mustache. I didn't have the mustache. No, I've grown this 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 look for the for the play that I'm doing right now. Yeah, uh, it, but people still know it's me from time to time. Um, every now, every now and then. But it, the the newsroom did have a lasting effect. A lot of people still do come up to me to talk about the show and how yeah. much they miss it. A lot of people wish that it had had a longer life. Uh, we had three seasons, um, which was which was. A short run, relatively, when you compare it to other shows, but we got a lot of mileage out of it, I think. We'll show a clip in it for a second, uh, in a second. but Long Day's Journey um, in tonight, describe it. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I mean, for my money, I think it's the greatest American play. It's written by Eugene O'Neill, who is often considered the, the father of the American drama, and uh, this, this play is considered to be his his uh, masterpiece, in a sense, it was an autobiographical play that he wrote in the 40s about his family and uh, the pain and the wounds and the suffering that, that they all had uh, living together in this summer home in uh, New London, Connecticut. And uh, it, it holds up, I think, to this day as just a, a portrait of, of, a, of, a, of a family in peril who loves each other so dearly but, but can't help themselves and can't help fighting and bickering and going and after all. each other. I play Edmund Tyrone, which is the baby of the family, which is the, the dramatic version of Eugene O'Neill. That's the, the character that he based on himself. Growing up in the massive state of Delaware, <laughs> uh, you were just telling me that, we were, uh, with all due respect to yeah. you and, 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 and Vice President um, <laughs> Joe Biden, as a kid, did you say to yourself, I want to act? Yeah, well, it, it, it kind of crept in. I, I loved movies. I had a wild imagination when I was a kid, and I, I had a crazy love of film and didn't really know what a movie was. I just knew that I was obsessed with watching my favorite movies over and over again. It was a lot of adventure movies, like the Indiana Jones movies and Ghostbusters and things of that nature. And once I got a little bit older and realized that, uh, you know, Indiana Jones wasn't a real person, but it was Harrison Ford, and that Dr. Venkman wasn't mm -hmm. uh, a real person, it was Bill Murray, it started to look really appealing to me. And uh, uh, I thought, oh, gosh, that's something I'd like to do. And so I got mm -hmm. into it at, at a relatively young age. I did my first play here in New York when I was 15. Really? Yeah. What was it? It was called Current Events, and it was at the Manhattan Theater Club. It wow. was a play by David Marshall Grant. When did he want a Tony for, uh, for, for Spring Awakening? For Spring Awakening, Spring Awakening. yeah. yeah. I, I won a Tony for Spring Awakening, which is a musical I did on Broadway about almost 10 years ago now. It yeah, can. yeah. we opened in the, the winter of 2006. We opened wow. Spring Awakening on Broadway there at the Eugene O'Neill Theater. So things are, are coming full circle in a strange way. By the way, I should make it clear that uh, Long Day's Journey into Night, American Airlines Theater on 42nd Street. That's I'm correct. sorry for your... Oh, no worries. Yeah, through the Roundabout Theater Company is doing it as part <laughs> of their, their 50th uh, year celebration there. So Who else it, in it? Uh, it's a phenomenal group. I'm, I'm lucky to be part of the lineup. Jessica Lang plays my mother. Gabriel Byrne plays my father. Uh, Michael Shannon plays my brother, and Colby Minifee is playing the servant maid. Didn't we have our... Michael Shannon here? From, he... from uh, yeah, from Boardwalk Empire? Yeah, he was yeah. on Boardwalk Empire for several years. Oh, God. Phenomenal actor. Oscar nominee for Revolutionary Road. One, one of, uh, one of my, been one of my favorite actors before I got the chance to work with him, and, and, wow. and now it's just my, my admiration for him has skyrocketed since getting the chance to be on stage with him. He's really incredible. Can we show uh, a clip from... One of my favorite series of all time. Let's do it. Okay, Newsroom, HBO. Let's take a look at John. Did you know that Will McAvoy didn't know that you were hired as EP and that he's at his agent's office right now? I didn't know that when the day began, but I know it now. I quit my job for this, Mac, and so did the three other people you told me to bring. Well, our show was canceled, so we were out of work I was anyway. over any other show I wanted at CNN. I know, but I wasn't. That's not the point. Still, Excuse it aggravated me. Was you right to a position of, well, you know, a certain position of... So I put down first and last month's rent. Do I have a job in New York? I haven't seen that in a while. Okay, yeah. Now, <laughs> she was the executive producer. Yeah. Okay, you were... I was her, her senior producer yeah. for the show. Yeah. Aaron Sorkin, right? Yeah, Aaron Sorkin wrote that. Yeah. 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 How much do you love it? Uh, it? It's incredible. It, it, working with someone like Aaron, who is that good at writing, is it, it makes... You know, a lot of people say, like, oh, God, isn't it really hard to tackle that, that dialogue? And... Um, I thought that. In a sense, yes, it's challenging because it's very verbose, but uh, 
it's a lot harder to, to, to say bad dialogue. It's much more challenging. <laughs> so when it's good, it's actually, uh, you know, half the battle is, is fought and won for you. You just have to kind of do it justice and, and let it take you through. Yeah, so I was, I was watching it. My wife and I were sitting there going, I know, I'm, okay, it's, it's an it's HBO series, but I'm sitting there, we're rooting for you to be with... Oh yeah, there was a love triangle situation on that show. My Allison Pills character, Maggie. Yeah, we were be we, with Maggie, yeah. and then you're with her roommate. And then I ended really, up with the roommate for a while. You're a really nice guy, but you really weren't into. Yeah, I know too much. Uh, <laughs> I love that you love the yeah, show. Yeah, it's great. Um, but here's the thing: what I'm curious about a show like that, mm. you're dealing with current events, but not exactly to the T. But it, there's a right. lot of real stuff going on. Yeah. Are you a political person? Uh, it, I, I don't know necessarily if, if I would describe myself as that, as in that nature. You know, I don't work uh, in the, in the political spectrum, so by default, I'm politics fascinate you. Uh, yeah, it, it fascinate me and terrify me. And uh, um, I mean, I pay attention to things, but I, mm. I wouldn't say that I'm like a political junkie or yeah. anything. I know music fascinates you. I love music. Talk yes, about I your music. do. Yeah, I love music. I write music and play music as well. Uh, in addition to to the acting, I put out my first record in January. Called Six Day Hurricane. Six Day Hurricane. Available now on iTunes. And available now on iTunes. Yeah. I jumped on that line. So yeah. Oh yeah, please. It's available, available now. now on iTunes and other digital platforms. And look at you, right? <laughs> Six Day Hurricane. Uh, could you could you please make everyone know why it has that name? Yeah. Well, we made the record in the fall of 2012, and. Uh, had no idea this was going to happen, but the day that we started recording was was the day that uh, that Hurricane Sandy wreaked havoc upon the East Coast, and so it had this somber quality while we were making the record because we were really excited to be putting this thing down, but you know the East Coast was really suffering and hurting, and it was really sad, and a lot of the city didn't have power, but the studio where we made it in in Brooklyn actually still did have power, and uh, and so I, I thought about what I was going to call the record, and we made it in six days in the midst of this force of nature, and so that's how I came up with the title of the and record. And the last song, uh, Connected to Wildwood, New Jersey? Yeah, that's right. The last song on the record is a little bit of a love letter to Wildwood, New Jersey, which was one of the spots that I would go to when I was a kid. My parents would take us to either one of the Delaware beaches, we'd go to Rehoboth Beach, or we would go to Wildwood. <sighs> And uh, and so I have a, a fondness for a, for a many of the many of the shore points. I got a setup question for you. Ready? Yeah. Knock this one out of the park. Springsteen or Bon Jovi? I gotta go Springsteen. I know. He's my hero. Yeah, I saw him on Monday night. <laughs> I just Over went. Bar I did a bar Barclays. Barclays, you went. Yeah, it is incredible. Played for almost four hours. What makes him so incredible? Uh, for those of us who have seen oh, him. Oh gosh, you know. I'm not as much of an aficionado as you or Governor Christie. For me, the songwriting, I just don't, you know, the, I don't, I, I feel like he's unrivaled in his generation. Like, he's an actual poet, you know, lyrically. It's, it's unbelievable what he creates in a, in a rock song. And, and then just the showmanship. How does he still do it? And he's in his mid-60s, guys? I, yeah. How 67 does he, now? 66, I think? How I don't does know. he still do he it? He played for four, almost four hours straight, no break. Not even the pretense of, oh, we're going to go off stage and then come back for the encore. They just plowed straight through and kept on playing. And it really is one of those things where you're in a stadium with, with thousands and thousands of people, and yet you, he creates an intimacy so effortlessly that makes you feel like it's happening in a smaller space than it actually is. It's really magical. By the way, we're doing this in May 2016. Would you guys tell me he played Purple Rain the other night? He did, yeah. Did you saw that? Yeah, yeah. It was beautiful. What was it like? It was beautiful. It was really moving. He had done it a couple nights before at Barclays, and then he did it at the Encore for the show that I saw, which was the second of his two shows that week. And uh, yeah, it was beautiful. It, it was it was it was so celebratory, but also you know very sad to just kind of look back and think about that what a, what a loss that was to to the world and to the musical community. But he. Uh, he kept the spirit alive that night for sure, playing that song. Man, as you love your as music. I do. I love music. You don't have to pick your music and acting. Um, I mean, not necessarily. If I, if I, uh, I, I choose, I choose not to choose. Um, Good for you. Because I like to do both, and uh, you know, the music thing right now, it, it, you know, to be honest, it is more. I wouldn't. I am doing it professionally because I am putting out records and playing shows. But you know the acting thing is is much more of an in demand thing. The music is something that I have to kind of schedule on my own time and figure mm -hmm. out ways to make that work. Um, and I love them both very dearly, and they they you know scratch very different creative itches. And so um, yeah, I like to keep them both around as much as I can. Yeah, that's what you get for being talented. Uh, 
That's your problem. You got to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, that's my cross to bear. Uh, I suppose. John Gallagher, Gallagher Jr., Tony Award-winning actor in the Roundabout Theater production of Eugene O'Neill. That guy, pretty good. Yeah, uh, long day's journey he was on tonight. The American Airline Theater uh, at Forty Second Street. Thank you so much. for My pleasure. Us. Thanks Good for stuff. having me. Stay yeah. right there. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over twenty-five years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET Studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health. Valley National Bank, Berkeley College, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.